There's a classic effect that is done in chemical magic shows. And I've done this numerous times myself. It's the old story of taking water and turning it into wine. And then you can take the wine and turn it back into water. Sort of impressive. Well, you probably guessed how this is done. It makes use of an indicator called phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein is pink in an alkaline or basic solution and colorless in an acid solution. So I had some phenolphthalein in the water, I poured it into an alkaline solution, it turned pink, and then I turned it into water by having an acid solution. Well, phenolphthalein was uh, first synthesized back in 1871 by Adolf von Bayer as a prospective dye. This was at a time when William Henry Perkin had made the first synthetic dye mauve and everyone was trying to make novel colors. Phenolphthalein was one of those. It never worked out as a dye, but it worked out very well as an acid-base indicator, and of course it's used by students all over the place. But there's an interesting uh, story that goes with phenolphthalein. This goes back to 1900 and Hungary, when the grape harvest failed, and there was not enough white wine to satisfy the demands of the nation. And uh, there were a lot of fake wines that were being produced uh, and being passed off as authentic Hungarian wine. So the government said, gee, you know, let's find a way to really know whether or not any sample of wine is authentic or not. So they had an idea. Why not put a little bit of phenolphthalein into the authentic wine so that if you ever had to test it, all you'd have to do would be to take a sample, mix it with a bit of alkali with base, and if it turned pink, then you knew that it was an authentic sample. And uh, that was an interesting uh, you know, idea, and it, it, it worked. So here was the, the notion, is to take some wine, and of course, if it's white wine, you can add phenolphthalein to it, and that doesn't change the, the color of the wine. And if you want to test whether it's authentic or not, you would just combine it with a tiny bit of, of alkali. And if you get a pink color, it meant that the wine was authentic. However, of course, before putting this into practice, they had to make sure that putting phenolphthalein into the wine was safe. And this was a, a, a challenge that was given to uh, a chemist at that time. And uh, he decided to be his own guinea pig. And he tested phenolphthalein on himself. They did that in, in those days to see whether or not a substance was safe. Well, it turned out that he had an experience and he had to run very quickly to the bathroom. So did his colleague who tried it. And phenolphthalein turned out to be an excellent laxative. Well, in those days, people were looking for laxatives because there was a common belief that all disease starts in the colon and you have to regularly evacuate the colon. This was a theory that was first propounded by uh, John Harvey Kellogg of serial fame. So anyway, phenolphthalein came around and uh, a Hungarian emigre who had become a pharmacist in New York knew about this story. And he decided that he wanted to sell phenolphthalein, but he had to flavor it somehow. So he mixed it together with chocolate and came up with, of course, what came to be the most famous of all laxatives, and that was Exlax. It sold extremely well because it was very, very effective and it also tasted good. Uh, but there were stories about, uh, you know, students putting some phenolphthalein into, into uh, their teacher's uh, coffee or whatever and, and uh, hoping for a shortened class. And uh, there were also concerns that children might take this as, you know, thinking it's candy and eat the uh, laxative. Nevertheless, sales of X-lax persisted for decades until in the 1990s, there were some rat studies that suggested that phenolphthalein may be carcinogenic, very questionable studies, and it was removed from the market. And today, X-lax no longer contains phenolphthalein, but it does still contain a laxative. It's derived from the senna plant. It's a mixture of compounds called senocides. So that's what X-lax is today. And uh, if you have constipation problems, it still works. And sometimes students still put it into their teacher's food and see what can happen. I don't know, a student gave this to me. Don't worry, it's just chocolate. <laughs>